what's up everybody, my name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to XCOM 2 The Valkyrie playthrough. Today we're going on Operation Unholy Heart where we're going to be facing some of the toughest enemies in the game because there's going to be a sector pulled on the field basically. But uh, we're going to take uh, Erika, Marina, Jacqueline, Hilde, Callie and Heidi. So about four people in this squad can still get a promotion so it seems like we leveled that out quite nicely. It's also going to be the first time that Heidi is going to rock the serpent suit, so we'll uh, see how that works out. So here we go. Dropping in at the outskirts of Bloemfontein in South Africa. And this seems like, yeah, the city limits indeed. Hostile forces are already moving to destroy the data tap installed nearby. We need to lock down the area and secure the device at all costs. We okay, so this is going to be interesting. Advent has additional material stashed somewhere in the AO, but we don't have an exact position. The clock is ticking, but we should still try to recover that gear if possible. Okay, so that means we're going to try and move up through the streets as quickly as possible. And if we spot something, you'll be the first to know. Over here on the side of the building we see Sala and Klein, the queens of war. So Sarah is still alive, but Alessia, of course, has died since then. So that is sad. But uh, we're trying to take care of this little building over here. Just to make sure that it's clear. And if I can, I'm gonna put um, Erika on top of this gas station. That would be a really nice vantage point for her. And that's our last move, so let's see if the enemies are gathering as well. They might be... Uh... Ooh, there they are. Okay, so that's a Lancer Shield Bay and a Mech. That's easy to start with, but then... Ooh, there's the Sectobolt. That's a lot of damage on that device. I don't know how many hits of that caliber it can take. Because I feel like it won't be able to do much. So there we go, now we have a shot on... The shield bear and the lancer. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm just going to move everybody up again. We and we'll uh, ambush them in the next turn. But I can use Kali to actually hack this. It's been a while since we had one of these towers. But we can hack this tower. If there's something useful there. I might be able to use it right now. So let's take a look. Small alien alloy cache or a large alien alloy cache. And a failed hack will result in a group of enemy reinforcements. But it's a 100% chance to actually get this. So I'm just going to grab the small alien alloy cache. We could have grabbed the big one. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, I need to look at the difference between the two hack stats as well. Because that has a, a large impact on whether you're successful or not. This two. But there we go. A little bit of alien alloys. And that should end Kelly's turn as well. And not reveal us in the slightest. Okay, moving on. And we spot a second batch of enemies. The Codex and the Spectre. Uh, so that means we're dealing with at least four pulls. I'm gonna put everybody else on Overwatch. I think I can, uh, I can have one more turn of Overwatches here. Before we need to start uh, attacking these guys. Don't know, it seems like the Spectre and the Codex are probably going to go for the objective as well. Which means that I have probably one more turn before they, yeah, they're right next to it now. That's four damage, which is fine. But then, of course, I'm going to assume the Sector Bolt is going to fire on it as well. Or can only one enemy fire at it at one time? It seems like it, because it moved back to us. It moved back to us, there we go. Okay. Now, do we still see... No, I don't see anybody else. So we kind of have a clear shot at um, these guys over here. I'm going to put Erica around here so she's not too blocked off from the building. Affirmative. But she should still have a pistol shot on the guys down there. So if I go... Yeah, I can still shoot at the shield bear from over here. But first things first, I think we should start with either a normal grenade. I think a normal grenade is going to be fine for now. Ooh, I probably shouldn't go over there because that's 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 going to explode. So let's just move it over here. Position confirmé. And then just fire a grenade right in that little group of enemies. I won't be using the cover over there, but at least I can 
Although, you know what? If I take out that cover, they might want to move in our direction. So there we go. Let's start with a grenade, as we're used to. Jacqueline tosses one in there. And that takes care of most of the armor as well. There we go. And a critical on the shield bear. There we go. Max shield bear and lancer. Really the, the easiest group to deal with, I, I suppose. But, but we have one explosive nearby. But we also have a chance of maybe hacking the mech. I feel like we have enough shots left to try and hack the mech. Uh, Hilda's not her best hacker. But I might as well try. Who is she bonded with? She's bonded with Erica, actually. Now that's interesting. Let's give her an advanced teamwork action. Because she moved once to get in, into position, so she can't use a sniper rifle anymore. But now she can. And then I think Hilda I can use to do Haywire Protocol on the mech. Because if we can get a buddy with us... <coughs> that would be nice. So shut down 81%, control 41%. Um, I think I'm going to have to try to control 41, but it should be a little bit higher since we're uh, a lot better on the tech score. You know what? I'm going to check Kelly. Kelly has, I think, 30% more hack. So there we go, we get a 50-50% chance with Kelly's stat, so let's do exactly that. And we get it, there we go. Almost 100% because the difference is so high. Yeah, those percentages don't really match always, because of course the higher the hack stat, the further that bar always goes. And we get a mech on our side, so we don't need to worry about that. Maybe I should have waited with uh, giving my bond action to Erica there. I don't think we get access to the mech immediately, and it might spot something else, but it doesn't at the moment. What's our chances at the shield bay? Um, the shield bay is actually pretty doable. So 84% on the shield bay with the sniper rifle. Our first shot with the plasma lance is a hit. There we go. He goes down. That's right. He still had a bit of armor as well. Uh, that's death from above, so we can't even try to shoot the lancer from here. Um, I could explode this thing, but that's going to hit uh, Jacqueline as well. So we can't really use the explosive over here. So that means we kind of know that there shouldn't be enemies visible over there. So I'm going to just put Heidi over here. So oh, she yeah. has a, a flanking shot. There we go. And that should be enough to take care of the Lancer. And he dodged it. That was impressive. But with the dodge... We can actually, we got a flanking shot ability point, that's great. But Blackjack can actually pistol him to death with the 100% chance now. I could have shadowed her as well. Ooh, 8 damage, that was nice. And there we go. So now we need to move up towards the center of the building here. I still have the Shredstorm cannon available as well. So the building is over there. I might want to move to the sides. And then Marina over there and she can go into Overwatch. And then we'll see what happens next. So the Codex is going to fire again, which is good. And we can see the final batch there as well. So they're all inside of the building. Unless that's just the uh, companions of the sector pulled. No. There needs to be another pulled. Because I know there's an Archon on the field as well. This is going to be interesting. So... Um, let's move up with the mech first. The mech is, well, expandable. So let's just move him up. And that's probably gonna trigger something. Yeah, there we go. Oh, the two Archons are on the side there. So those are coming in. Um, I could blast them, but I think I'm gonna use the torpedoes to actually blast open the building. Can I get in the building somehow with those torpedoes? Doesn't seem to, but I can blow open the door if I wanted to. But I know they're just a little bit closer. I can actually try and guess with... You know what? Give me a second. I'm going to blast these guys to hell. So Marina moves one bit closer. I don't know if she'll spot anything. No, she doesn't. Aside from the Archons, she doesn't spot anything. But I want to try this. So if I just graze the objective, I think I should hit 
quite a bit because the sector bolt is still around there somewhere as well so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try this one two three i only hit one thing there oh and it was this the codex of course and then the specters clearly got hit as well okay so we didn't see everything there and then i think Oh, we we just didn't hit the sector bolt. Okay, but this is looking good. We hit almost everything with that shred storm cannon, and uh, we still have more grenades. Let's see. I have a nice shot on basically all of them, and the chances are pretty high as well. So I think I'm gonna put Erica on kill zone. But I think what's gonna be even better. Is if I start rampaging through everything here with Reaper mode enabled from Heidi. Because I think I have some guaranteed kills here. So if I go My Reaper. If I go Reaper and then Sword Strike on the Codex. Uh, Codex. Codex, please. Codex. Codex. There we go. Codex. You know what? No. Wait. Wait. I'm gonna do that definitely, but I ha still have a few options here. So first things first, I can actually toss a grenade onto these guys, tr killing the Codex in one go anyway. So that saves me the trouble of going over there. That's some hits on the Archons as well, which means that if I manage to drop another grenade on the Archons, I might be able to take him out like that. Um, how far can I toss that grenade right now? Just not far enough, but if I move a little bit closer... No, no, I don't reach those two, but I think... No, I'm gonna have to try something else, because uh, I'm, I'm risking too much here. Let's see. So I have a shot at one of the Archons in the back with Erica. so if I try this... 82%. If that hits, that sh should do some nice damage. There we go, 10 damage. So that's gonna have weakened him enough... For me to do a sword strike. So Battle Frenzy, but you were already at Battle Frenzy, so... Sword Slash on the weakest Archon. Yeah, that one. That's probably gonna spot us the Sectopult, which might bring him into a better position for us to shoot at. The frame rate is dying. I do apologize about this, because it's, it's really, really dying. I don't know why, because there's no... There we go. There's nothing they need to do here. And we get some loot in one go. And she, of course, spots everybody else in the room. There we go. So that's one. I was still at half health for the objective, which is good. Okay. So the sector pulled is still at full health. And the mech as well. Okay. That is interesting. Something went on Overwatch. I think that's the mech. But I think... Don't I have... I don't think I trigger Overwatch. Uh, Shadow Stab. This soldier does not trigger Overwatch or Reaction Fire. So yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna move to... The Spectre next. But... If I can manage to hit... Maybe I can try this now. I'm gonna hit a civilian here. Which I don't know if I should. I can't. It's the only place where I can hit both the Archon and the Spectre. And if I can do this, then at least we've taken out the Spectre. And then I can move immediately towards the Shield Bear. And I can kill the Archon as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this, sadly. So I'm sorry, civilian. Explosion. I'm really sorry about this, but. Uh, we need to kill those aliens. And there we go. Now, I don't think that will be enough for the Archon now that I look at it. But we still have one more shot with Hilda over here. And I can actually move her a little bit closer to see if I can give her a better shot. So if I put it over here... Probably don't get sight on the Secto bolt. No, I don't. No. Uh, but I can hit the Archon from here, and if I hit... There we go, 7 damage is enough for me. 
Or should I say enough for Heidi? Because Heidi's gonna... Ooh, we get a free action as well. That is juicy. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with that. But I might be able to give Erika another shot off to that. First things first, though. Let's just slash the Archon over here. There we go. Um, Reaper, down it goes. Then, I'm actually wondering, can I still see... No. I was wondering if I could still see Erika, because Erika could help out here. I'm going to boost Kelly up to the front as well. I can't, can't fire it with her anyway, but uh, there we go. Right behind that cactus. Then, um, next up is going to be... I think I can move from... Crap, I go through fire if I do that. Can I move to one of these guys first then? Can I move to the... I can move to the Codex next. So might as well do that. So Codex first. Like this. That gives us another... There we go. Slash. So we're up to 7 and 8 damage I think. Need to count that, but for now it seems fine. I'm actually within reach of... Wait a second, what's my movement range here? Uh, I'm guessing I won't be able to hit the shield bear or the specter here. And since the specter is closest to everybody else, I might as well just go for the specter now. There we go. Let's just move to over here. And slash the specter. And then I can still try and do... Um, wait a second, can I still... No, I can only frostbite this guy now. And I can't... Yeah, I can only slash the mech. Um, hmm. Rapid fire is useless at the moment. And I'm not entirely sure whether Kelly would see anything. I'm gonna do so, however. I know Heidi has Untouchable at the moment, so let's just give Kelly... Our second uh, action here. Ah, she doesn't see anything. She could go and combat protocol. Yeah. The sector pot, which is up to 10 uh, slash 11 damage. So I'm going to do that. Because it has a chance to stun. It's a really low chance. But it, oh, where the hell is that go thing going? Um, I think it jolted it. But I can't say for sure. Five damage, but then on top of that, yeah, it does it does more damage. But it shows it in two uh, in two stages. Okay. Okay. And then Hilda only has one. Wait a second. Oh, I can even try a wire protocol on the sector pod, even though I don't see it. Never mind. Let's go and try and do that. If I can take that, I'm not going to be able to. But if I can take it. That would be nice. 50% to stun it. That's a 50-50% chance. And he has a way higher attack score. No, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to cancel. Maybe I can do another uh, combat protocol on him, though. To not let that turn go to waste. I'm going to do that. So let's just use combat protocol on the sector pole again. And there we go. Back to the center of the earth. And we got another hit in on the sector pole. That's the benefit of... Now, now that I know when sector pods are going to show up. And of course the, the, the double mech. So it's going up. So that means you can only fire at the mech, I think. Or Heidi, but Heidi has, a, has untouchable. Okay. Oh, he's just going for the objective now. Fair enough. I mean, he's going to break the building while doing so. So I should get a better shot at him like that. And he's going to fire at Heidi, but Heidi is untouchable. There we go. Even from a sector port. Heidi does not give a flying fuck. And then the mech is going to try and fire. Ooh, okay. Untouchable only works for one attack. I did not know that. I did not know that. That is That makes things a lot more scary than I thought they were going to be. Okay, so that's 11 damage on Heidi, and I think that means that she she's almost dead, probably. 11 damage, yeah, that's 
almost half her health bar. But of course, first things first is trying to get rid of this uh, the shield bay over here. I'm gonna put her over here. Again, she doesn't she doesn't trigger Overwatch. So even if the uh, sector pod has guaranteed Overwatch, she's not gonna trigger it. But then take this guy down. Thank you. So that removes all the shields. And I get implacable and an ability points. Okay. But now, let's get rid of some of that armor. While first, maybe... Yep, give me a second first. I think I might be able to uh, snipe some, uh, some guys from over here. Although there's a lot of armor going around. Should probably try a few cannon shots first. First things first. Um, let's nuke. Although, do I need to nuke? He has... 10 health left, so I think one combat protocol is gonna gonna kill him. So let's just nuke um, this guy over here, the mech, with a few rockets. That's one shredding at least. Then, um, yeah, Marina can go over here and then fire away at that's the sector bolt. That's the mech. 82% uh, chance. That's just gonna be nice. There we go. With some shredding on the cannon. There we go. Armor gone. Which means that we should basically be done with this. I don't know if we need to go and find that loot stash. But for now, I don't think we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So uh, let's just get Jacqueline... Oh, you know what? Let's use Erica first to kill the mech. So that's a 99% chance. That should hit. There we go. Mech down. Only the, best. Only the best indeed. And we get that from above, in which we can just reload for free. But that's going to be it, because I don't have anything else I can do. But now, that sector pulls. Yeah, I'm just going to nuke that sector pulled with the MP bomb, I think. I think the EMP bomb does 10 damage. So let's just... 12 damage even, so let's just take it out. Because that ignores... Does that ignore armor? I'm not exactly sure. I would think it does, but I think only combat protocol... Oh no, there we go. And there we go. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. That was one severe wound though, so I need to be careful if there's a lot of enemies still around. That untouchable can only take one hit. Unlike parry, because I'm pretty sure parry can take multiple hits. We've parried multiple hits on the same turn. Um, but there we go, protected device complete. I do think it's kind of sad now that we've... Uh, XCOM Chimera Squad just released this week. It's Chimera Squad. Chimera Squad. Um, and it's really sad now that we know that, uh, you know, Vipers can actually talk and have a personality and all that. That we can scare off Vipers with the Serpent suits. <laughs> That's just really, really sad. So, Heidi is only wounded for four days, which is great. And everybody else did okay, but we don't have a single promotion, which is uh, kind of sad, but there we go. And we get a Codex Brain, an Alirium Core, an Advanced Stock, uh, some Alien Alloys, and then the corpses of everything we killed. Another impressive effort, Commander. My expectations were high, and yet you have exceeded them. And we will be able to continue scanning at the same rate, so signal jamming has been countered. And we get a scientist, Bridget O'Doherty. So, research time decreased by another 11%. Um, but Heidi now received the fear of poison trait. Negative trait, of course. I think if we go to the infirmary... Yeah, we can uh, fix that up. There we go. That was Hilda, not Heidi. But it's Heidi... Yeah, okay. So, Heidi... Hilda is now available to get her trait removed. While Heidi is now wounded, so we can't remove the trait until she's recovered in full. And we get a supply raid. Ooh. Ooh, that is really good. I want to scan at that. Because we were scanning at the... Reaper HQ. So yeah. Supply raid, definitely. 
The supply rates are, of course, extra missions, but we get a lot of supplies from that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get that before the supply drop, but that doesn't really matter, I think. Psionics are complete, so there we go. Let's check that out, because uh, we got the advanced Psy amp and a new facility, the Psy lab, so where we can start checking uh, rookie soldiers to be Psy operatives. I don't know if they're going to be strong. I think the Templar is still a bit stronger, but maybe we can make Templars over there. I'm not entirely sure. This evolved version of the Psy Amp, blah, blah, blah. And digital network construction. We've made an ast astounding breakthrough. We must begin researching digital network construction immediately. And the crystal autopsy is now instant. Um, I'm just going to check this. The resistance is improving the systems on their end, which will allow us to build the digital network upgrade in the resistance ring at a cost reduced by 50%. I don't care too much about that. I do enough of those uh, resistance ring orders uh, already, so I think I'm fine. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're running out of research here. Uh, so let's do the chrysalid autopsy first. Presumably, the name chrysalid derives from assumptions made previously about the creature's unusual means of reproduction. Although rumors have long prevailed about the existence of zombies, Created as a byproduct of the chrysalid gestation, recent reports seem to indicate a new, equally disturbing means of propagating their species. Because, of course, in the previous game, even my own intellectual curiosity is not enough to overcome my doubts as to whether or not it was really a wise decision for our troops to bring this particular specimen on board the ship. So that just indicates the difference between the chrysalids now and the chrysalids in the previous game where they, when they infected somebody they turned into zombies and only after a certain time they were zombies and they could still attack of course they turned into a new chrysalid. Well now you have that cocoon which uh, doesn't attack but still has a lot of health before it turns into another chrysalid. But we get the Hellweave. Hellweave not only grants a bonus to soldier health but will return damage to enemy melee attackers and grants a 100% chance to set them afire. So we don't get any extra immunities, but we get an automatic retaliation attack to melee attackers. Which is not that interesting. Um, the only thing that blocks us from are Lancers, um, Berserkers and Chrysalids themselves. Which is not too interesting. Um, I'm not entirely sure actually what would give us... So we could start decrypting. I mean, this the facility lead gives us 50 intel as well. It's only one day, so might as well do that. And we continue scanning. We'll get that facility lead immediately, probably. There we go. So new facility in New Indonesia unlocked. And we get... Um, yeah, next up, I think we should go for the Lost Although Autopsy. similar in appearance to the psionic zombies we have encountered previously in our engagements with the aliens. All current indications are that these lost are the product of something else entirely. Prolonged exposure to the chemical agents first released in the earliest stages of the invasion seem to have turned these once innocent civilians into yet another form of the undead. Yeah, and it, it, he makes it sound so normal. So that's going to be one day... Um, which basically means we get that automatically. No, the covert action has completed probably. Or. There we go. Covert action completed. Reduced avatar project progress by two again. So we don't really need to worry about the avatar project at the moment. Jessica's health was increased. She gained some cohesion with Elizabeth. And both gained experience. But again, no promotions. It's been a while since we had a proper promotion. Let's assign a new covert action. And there we go, we're gonna go for modular vector rifles, so this would allow the vector rifles to actually gain a weapon upgrade slot, of which they don't have any at the moment. Although, you know, they do have one, but uh, you can add another one on top of that, which is gonna be really nice. We're gonna send Elizabeth and Paula on there, and she go as an extra scientist to reduce the risk, so there we go. And we get the lost autopsy completed immediately. We are down a scientist now, but we get the ultrasonic lure. Using what we've learned of the lost and their behaviors, the ultrasonic lure was designed to help control their movements in the field. Deployed like a grenade, the lure will draw the lost to wherever this device is thrown. Any lost within sight of the target area will move to attack. Okay. Um, other than that, we still have a few autopsies, so we're just going to continue autopsying. So, uh, priest next. Specimen known to our troops as the Advent Priests, 
has up until recently been rarely sighted outside the city center. While not physically intimidating, much like the elders themselves, these priests are deceivingly powerful psionic beings. Even in death, their remains still radiate with powerful afterimages of psi energy. So there we go. Priest uh, sliced up a little bit and I'm gonna actually check. I still have this one open slot here. Do I have enough supplies? I'm gonna assume not because I barely have any supplies. How much do I need for the Psy Lab? Okay. Five more power, which is not a problem. 175 supplies. So in a, a few days I have my, uh, my supply drop. So we're gonna be able to build that after that. And there we go. Priest done as well. And we get some uh, sustaining spheres. So that's basically a deployable stasis field, probably. It's an emergency failsafe mechanism that automatically activates when a soldier is on the brink of death, placing them in temporary suspension to extend their life. The sphere can only be used once in combat and will be permanently removed from the soldier's inventory once activated. So yeah, the same ability that the uh, priests also have. Improved swords. Oh my. Oh my, definitely increasing all sword damage by one. Definitely doing this. Eager to begin, yes, that's going to be really, really nice. And there we go. Avatar project initiated. An alien facility was constructed. We can check that out. Um, and this one does not seem to be protected. We can assault that one. But that's just going to add one more block. That's not a problem at all. Is Heidi back already? I think she should be. And I think I can remove her negative traits now. Yeah, there we go. So Heidi, remove those negative traits. And then we get the normal level up of the Avatar project. It's going, uh, it's recovering rather quickly from our damage. Only one block. That's not a problem. That is not a problem, Bradford. We're dealing with that. And there we go. Our second spark unit is online as well. I could assign another project. I'm not entirely sure if there is anything new here. Uh, no, we can't make another spark, but we did gain another core from last time. I could make another experimental armor thing, but we're already working on the raid suit, so I don't see... Yeah, I don't see a reason to do that. And then we get a dark event complete. Spider and fly, there's a risk of ambush on all covert actions. That's I not too bad. There we go. We gained experience on both soldiers and cohesion as well. And Elizabeth's health was increased by one as well. But more importantly, we can now add more upgrades to our vector rifles. There we go. We can assign another one. But again, I'm, I'm pretty okay at the moment. I think... I'll go modular shotguns, allowing for an additional upgrade slots. We could do the same with shotguns, which is really cool. Uh, and those are permanent upgrades, so I feel like, yeah. Although, with the assassin shotgun, I don't see the use, because usually we only take one ranger and the assassin shotgun is just so good. And already has three upgrade slots. I don't see the use for it, so I think I'm just going to gather supplies. And they did pretty well, so I think I'm gonna move our, yeah, one of the power relay engineers over to this mission. Um, so Elizabeth and Paula back on the mission, uh, on the covert action, and there we go. Things are going swimmingly and we'll get our supply drop right now. There we go. Oh wait, we get a mission instead. Oh, that is interesting. So right before the supply drop we got a mission. So, Operation Bloodhawk, rescue a VIP from an advent vehicle. It looks slow for now, but there's a gatekeeper on the field as well. So we need priest, trooper, specter, codex, gatekeeper, shield bear, and purifier. But these council missions usually have ambushes as well. So we get an engineer, 91 intel from that. But yeah, we're going to have to take a look. But the intel is going to be nice. That 90 intel is going to be nice to make contact with the lost regions in the next month. But uh, let me configure the team just a little bit. Oh, look at that. The uh, Serpent Army even takes over the uh, the colors you assigned to her. So now I've moved it to Emily Walker. And she, the Viper suit just looks awesome, the Serpent Armor. That is great. 
And there we have the squad for next time. So Elena, Marina, Lena, Christina, Emily and Sarah will go on Operation Bloodhawk where we need to rescue another VIP. Probably gonna get ambushed again, but uh, we know what to expect. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna take a little break. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough. And see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.